Andrew Jackson Davis, born in 1826 on the banks of the Hudson, is considered by many as instrumental in the development of the modern spiritualist movement. He was also responsible for raising the idea of, and coining the term, Law of Attraction, something which will no doubt be familiar to anyone who has read the best-selling spiritual help book, The Secret. His mother was an uneducated woman, while his father was a leather worker, renowned for his frequent drunkenness. Shut down and sit up, my boy. Do you hear me, Andrew? Oh, forget it. Davis was not well educated, and claimed to have read only one book by the time that he was 16 years old. While this claim has been met with some scepticism, and likely exaggerated to make his achievements seem more remarkable, it's still undeniable that he was by no means a great scholar. In fact, it becomes quite apparent that his scientific knowledge was not up to much when, in one of his books, he proclaims the makeup of water to be something of a mystery. But to rake him over the coals over this belittles what Andrew Jackson Davis did have knowledge on. Namely, such matters that science has no steadfast answer or explanation for. Davis's psychic powers began to develop, like Joan of Arc, where he heard voices in the fields, gentle voices, which gave him good advice and comfort. Clairvoyance followed his clairaudience. Davis soon came to notice of a local tailor named Levingston. Levingston was so intrigued by Davis's gifts that he abandoned his prosperous business and devoted his whole time to working with and developing Davis. He would read the letters or the watches of the assembled villagers while his eyes were covered up. But they soon put the powers to more productive use by using them as a medical diagnostic tool. For, according to Davis, the human body became transparent to his spirit eyes, but any body parts that needed attention would radiate a dark vapour. Often the patient was not even aware of the infliction. It is notable that Hippocrates once said, The affection suffered by the body the soul sees with shut eyes. Apparently, even then, the ancients knew something of such methods. Davis's housekeeper told an interesting story about an exhibition he took on March 6th, 1844. Mr. Davis was suddenly possessed by some power which led him to fly out of the house and to hurry off in a condition of semi-trance upon a rapid journey through the snow. All night he was out, and when he regained his clear perceptions, he said he found himself among Catskill Mountains, 40 miles from home. And there he claims to have met two men with whom he held intimate and elevating communion about medicine and morals. Jackson claimed that the two men he met in the mountains were Galan and Emanuel Swedenborg. Davis's vision of the afterlife was not dissimilar to Swedenborg's either, so perhaps it would make sense that he would reach out to discuss life, or the afterlife, as he saw it. A life that may be called semi-material, with pleasures and pursuits that would appeal to our natures, which had by no means changed by death. I saw study for the studious, congenial tasks for the energetic, art for the artistic, beauty for the lover of nature, rest for the weary ones. There are graduated phases of spiritual life, through which one slowly rose to the sublime and the celestial, and the best method of human advancement was to get away from sin, not only the sins which are usually recognized, but also those sins of bigotry narrowness and hardness, which are the very blemishes not of the ephemeral flesh, but of the permanent spirit. Money, alcohol, lust, 
violence and priestcraft in its narrow sense were the chief impediments to harmonious progress. As Davis's reputation continued to grow, he continued to attract the attention of many people of great note. One such visitor was Edgar Allan Poe. Quote the raven, nevermore. It was Davis who inspired Poe to write the 1845 story, The Case of M. Valdemar. Later in life, Davis would come to say that he had learned the process of how the soul leaves the body. Contrary to popular belief, death is both interesting and delightful, and that those symptoms which appear to be signs of pain are really the unconscious reflexes of the body. Davis would go on to describe that the soul very simply steps out of the body, and, more often than not, would be met by a former acquaintance or family member to guide them on their way. A very different image from the dark horror of death. Davis left his mark upon what came to be known as spiritualism, but did so with a wide and gentle restraint. Like it or not, believe it or not as you will, it remains that Davis was a miracle man when one considers what he was able to do with medicine. But was it just guesswork? In which case, he was capable of some incredibly lucky guesswork.